Hallo iedereen, uh, welkom in het eerste middelbaar. Est-ce que je peux poser une question Est-ce que vous êtes ensemble Non, on n'est pas en couple. Je pense que c'est meilleur ami plus plus. Oui, on est plus plus, mais genre même quasiment frère, c'est pas. Non, non peut-être que vous assumez pas. Alors, t'es dans la même place que Rémi Good job, Vinci. Good job. That's good. Very good. Good job. And one Vas-y, on accélère. Non, tu m'attends toujours, mais là, tu me laisses. Tu vas nous chez Rémi ce soir Non. Pourquoi Eh Harry Rémi Il est pas là. Léo The moment that the film came to exist was when I uh, started reading a book called Deep Secrets. And Deep Secrets is actually a sociological studies done by a psychologist called Naya Bue. And she spent five years in the lives of 150 boys. She followed them between uh, 13 and 18 years old. And at the age of 13, she asks them to talk about their male friendships. And um, what is beautiful is when you read these testimonies, is these boys talk about each other like it's love stories. They openly dare to use the word love without any hesitation. It's the most important people in their lives who they share everything with. Um, and then at the age of 15, 17, 18, she re-asks these same boys, these same questions. And you just notice how all of a sudden they don't dare to speak with that same language anymore. As if they have understood in the meantime that that vocabulary doesn't belong to them, that it's seen as feminine or gay. And so a lot of them deconnect uh, if I may say so, from not only from each other, but also from that language of the interior. And I think when I read that, I felt truly deeply connected to them, to these American boys, even though I grew up on the Flemish countryside. Um, because I also had the feeling that there was this point when I was young that I started to fear intimacy and started to see um, my fragility as a weakness rather than as a force. And I think when I was, when you're young, you think you're the only one going through certain things. But when I read these testimonies of these boys, I realized that I was far from alone and that this was actually speaking volumes about uh, masculinity and how in this society we deprive young boys from when they grow up to have this deep human connection with each other. It would, it would be a different dynamic, I think, with people from uh, a different age range. I think next to friendship and masculinity, this film is also about that very precise moment in your life when uh, there is this transition and this transformation from childhood to puberty. Uh, and that is also the same time when, for these young men, that type of language starts to change because societal pressures come in. I think that playground at that age is the moment where we are all confronted with the microcosmos of our society. A society that is very vertical and that divides people in groups. And all these groups have codes and norms and expectations put on us and I think therefore it was really important that this film moved uh, on the one hand from that childhood innocence from that maybe let's say idyllic love that has no border 
to this um, society in which things are much more categorized, labeled, boxed, and where we want to uh, actually tell people that we're all different. And, and where society wants to point out what our differences are rather than what connects us. Well, I think first of all, this sensual, intimate, uh, fusional friendship between two young men, I'm confronted with the fact that it's quite an exotic imagery. Um, I think if I went back in the history of cinema to look at these beautiful portraits of, of, of young men growing up, uh, one of the things I rarely found was this sensuality in friendship. Um, and actually, when you listen to all these 13-year-old boys describe their friendships, it's what they describe. It's uh, we two boys together clinging. It's really this enormous closeness. Um, and so, first of all, it was this realization that that is something we haven't always made visible. And it was about finding images, creating scenes, giving a platform to that tenderness. But then it was also about um, showing how um, brutality slowly slips in. What happens when we deconnect people from each other? What happens when um, labels want to understand? Um, and so I think uh, for me that was very important in their connection is what we considered Leo and Remy to have always was love in the broadest sense of the term. So we went looking uh, in a lot of schools, uh, actually in a lot of last, the last year of the primary school and then the first year of the secondary school. Um, because next to finding young people with talent, we also needed to find young people who were at that precise moment of pre-adolescence. Um, and it's a very short moment uh, in which you change a lot. Uh, so that was a big challenge also for the shoot of this film is that we wanted to capture that precise moment in time. So we went to all of these schools, we invited a lot of the boys to come to our casting and I think eventually we saw over 580 boys. But with Eden Nambrin the story is quite uh, peculiar because at a certain point I take a train in Belgium, I was sitting on the train listening to music uh, Max Richter, so everything becomes a little bit of cinema when you listen to him. And I look next to me and start observing this young angel talking to his friends. I don't hear what he says, but I just see his eyes full of expression. And I told him later that for me it was like there was this world already hiding behind his eyes. And I thought, I'm going to regret if I don't talk to this young person. So I went up to him and I asked if he wanted to do a casting for cinema, which he did. And um, his mom read the script and he allowed him to come to one of our castings. And then in one of the groups, because our casting process was quite elaborate in the sense that we wanted to work with these boys during a full day. So we invited them to come in groups every time of 20 boys. And by coincidence, Eden and Gustav were in the same group. And like I said, there was this collaboration between them that was beautiful to see. And, um, and we decided to work with them. They've never acted before. Yes, it's for both of them, it's a first experience. Um, but uh, yeah, how I mean, they read the script very early on because for me it was important that it wasn't only us choosing them, but also them choosing us. And um, we talked very openly about the themes of the film, masculinity, friendship. I mean, they are two young men growing up, so they understand the pressures of that. They have had friendships that changed along the way and they have felt heartbreak linked to friendship. Um, so very open, honest conversation. And then uh, we spend a lot of time together. We. And during that time we spent together, we never rehearse any concrete scene. So what we will do is we will spend daily moments like families would spend together. We go walking by the seaside, we 
make pancakes because they love pancakes. Sometimes uh, with an adult actor, sometimes with a crew member. And in a very informal way, I will start sometimes to say something about a character. Like, why do you think Leo would do something like that? And, and then we talk, but it's very informal. It's not like sitting at a table doing a reading. And actually, after months and months of doing that, what, what happens is they get very comfortable to the idea of the crew because they have met them somehow. They are confident that they know what the film is about because they have gathered all these pieces of information. And at the same time, never had to rehearse any texts. So they know that there's this freedom for them to become co-author of the piece. Uh, because they are 13, I don't talk like a 13 year old anymore. So for me, that is an important element to give them the freedom. Um, yeah, to to play with it, I suppose. It wasn't clear from the beginning. Somehow I only find our titles during the editing. I think it's because like they often, often say you write, you make a film three times, you write it, you direct it and then you edit it. And I feel like only during the editing, everything falls in its place of exactly what then, what it then becomes to be. Um, the first title of this piece was We Two Boys Together Clinging, based on a Walt Whitman poem and also a David Hockney painting. Because I love the idea of the verb clinging. Clinging is a verb that implies holding on to someone as, as, as tightly and as narrow and as, as hard as you can. And for me, it symbolized the state of two young human beings being so deeply, so, so completely connected one to another that they become like one human being. Um, but then during the editing, um, all of a sudden this word close popped up because the dramaturgy of this film is it's really a film in two pieces and a film that transforms midway actually and what happened with the word close which is also a word that of course we a, a close friendship um, which is actually very meaningful in the beginning of the film because they have this incredibly close friendship that then gets questioned exactly because of its closeness. Well, there's masculinity and then there's virility. And I feel like the two for the longest time have meant the same thing. And I feel like, well, me, first of all, me as, as, a, as a young kid, as a young human being, I felt like the body I was born in, a male body, was connected in this society to certain traits and expectations um, that I couldn't live up to. So for me, masculinity, let's say virility, because I think it's better to name that virility, was always a big source of conflict. It was never something that I felt resonated with who I was. There's this, this, this sentence in an Edouard Louis book that says that I never, he says, I never felt like a man if a man was this representation of what a man should be. And I kind of feel this or felt the same way as a kid. For me, masculinity opens that up and I want to deconnect actually masculinity with the term virility because I think there's completely other types and another vocabulary that we want to uh, reach out uh, when it comes to discussing ma masculinity. Um, so um, in a world, I think, in which uh, the imagery and the vocabulary of the language linked to masculinity so often is presented as very brutal, independent, emotionally stoic. I think it's important to show other types of representation linked to masculinity. And I do feel like we're living in a moment in time where um, that conversation is opened up. I think also through the beauty of this incredible feminist movement um, that laid bare a lot of toxic examples linked to behavior. Um, and so I do feel like maybe we are ready to discuss how for the longest time um, we have deconnected 
men from the language within, uh, the true language within. So that is something that I'm very eager and excited for to be, to be witnessing.